Hello everybody, you're listening to The Writer's Journey. I'm your host, Pastor Alfred. The Writer's Journey is a series of broadcasts that highlight certain portions of books that I have written or I'm currently writing that will be of particular benefit to writers. The topic for today is the best way to become a better writer is by studying the Word of God, not studying novels, movies, or the arts of writing itself. Let's look at the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. I'm reading from the ESV translation. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you would have good success. You see, this portion of the scripture is classic and it is so true. There is no going around it. You see, it tells us that the way to have good success is by meditating on the word, studying the word day and night and meditating on it. You see, that also applies to you as a writer. It is more important for you to study the Word of God than for you to read novels and study the structure and study how others create their novels, what they are doing, what tricks they are pulling, and trying to figure out what is actually making their novels sell more copies, you know, It is more important for you to study the Word of God than for you to study movies, for you to watch movies from the perspective of someone who is in the industry and someone who is studying the structure and all that goes into the movie from the backstage point of view, you know. It is actually even more important than learning about the art of writing itself. Naturally, you must learn the art of writing, but let us face facts. You must understand that a lot of the greatest works of literature were written by men who did not have a formal education or a good enough education. I mean, look at the Bible. Majority of it were written by people who did not have a formal education for their time. The only one who did that we are quite sure of is... Apostle Paul. Let us look at David. David grew up as somebody who took care of sheep. You see, he was somebody who were not we are not um, presented David as somebody who was a scholar or somebody who was exposed to a lot of any form of formal education, even though there clearly was some sort of formal education at at his time. You know, however, look at the books of Psalms that, that David wrote. Look at the books of the Bible that David wrote. They are so intelligent and they are so full of intellectual knowledge and Literally nourished. He even uses a lot of figures of speech in his writings. You know, the same applies to Solomon. You know, when you look at just people, a lot of them had a hunger for knowledge and they learnt by themselves. They were all self-taught. The more they sought God and the closer they got to God, the more they became they became studios, but you see, it was outside of a formal system. You know, there's a learning that comes from inspiration. There's a learning that comes from within you and between you and God. In times past, the non-Christian world has referred to it as your muse, something that inspires you, something that gives you an epiphany, something that's um, it's outside of you but gives you insights into knowledge or wisdom and that is how the world used to describe what they call a muse you know and they 
looked at it as kind of like a good luck thing. It could be a human being or something that, or whatever it is that inspired such knowledge or inspiration. However, what I want to break down to you is that, yes, there is a knowledge that seems to come from the realm of the spirit, something that is beyond you. You see, you must understand that the reality of the matter is that we are all created by God, Christians and non-Christians. You see, God created all of humanity and there is in every man the ability to communicate with the spiritual God because we are spirits and God is a spirit. You know, we are just spirits that are living in human bodies and we have souls. You see, we are spirits that have souls and that are living in human bodies. This applies to everybody, Christians and non-Christians alike. So as a matter of fact, yes, God can talk to non-Christians. As a matter of fact, when you look through the Bible, you have to understand that Christianity as Christianity started after the resurrection of Jesus. You see, before that, you can see that God talked to people. And let me ask you a question. When God first spoke to Abraham, did Abraham even know who God is? You know, was he somebody who followed God at that first time? So you can see that, yes, God talks to people. God is actually trying to reach people. There are times that people have given testimonies. Muslims have given testimonies of Jesus appearing to them in a dream. And they got converted that way. God talked to them in a dream. You see, these are people that are outside of Christ, but yet they have that ability to connect and, and communicate with God, with Jesus, you see. So there is actually the opportunity and the possibility for every human being to communicate with the spirit realm, to communicate with the real God, or to communicate with a fake God who is pretending to be God, or to communicate with a demon, you see. And there are different um, avenues for all of that to take place and different channels for whichever paths someone wants to take. However, naturally, you should understand that the only path that you should take with this is communication with God and with Christianity because every other kind of communication with any spiritual being will lead you in the wrong direction. Now I'm trying to explain the concept of the muse because when you understand the concept of the muse, it was actually based off of a... Um, an ancient goddess that gave inspiration that is actually part of the um, one of the early um, interpretations of a muse you know so you must understand that as it is possible to gain insights and knowledge from the realm of the spirits you can also gain insights and knowledge from god in the realm of the spirit and that happens a lot and that is revelation that is actually rema when you receive a word from god you see as a writer god can speak to you and talk to you when you have that close relationship with the holy spirit you see god can lead you you know the bible talks about how all scripture is written by the inspiration of the spirit of god the same thing can happen to you as an author, as you write non-fiction, as you write fiction. Even without that strong educational understanding of the art of writing, God can lead you. The Spirit of God can lead you. You see, and that is actually more important than the knowledge of the art of writing. Naturally, you must learn the foundation of the art of writing. And it is not something that you need to keep updating yourself on. Even though if you find something new or useful, it is good to update yourself. You know, the Bible talks about keeping abreast of the facts. It is one of the principles of success to know all there is to know that is new about what you do. It's very important, you see. However, I am telling you that communication with God, studying the Bible, listening to the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit speak to you, and knowing that the Holy Spirit actually wants to assist you in your writing and he can actually can. He can actually put ideas in your mind. When you try to write or construct 
your words in a certain way he can speak to you and tell you no this way is better and you see ah this sentence is actually a better way to express what you're trying to communicate you see so that is actually deeper and that is actually much more powerful and one of the ways you can strengthen your relationship with the Holy Spirit and your ability to hear the Holy Spirit and follow his leading is by studying the word when you study the word not only will you sharpen your spiritual antenna and be able to really hear the Holy Spirit and hear God's voice and be able to separate God's voice from every other voice you also put yourself in a position where you know God's will so you know what God wants you to write you know what God wants to communicate you know what is in line with the kind of message that God wants to put out there so your books now are books that are an extension of God's words to God's people and to the world to anyone God wants to speak to you see so that is one of the wonderful things about studying God's word and how it would help you as a writer you see it is of extreme importance that you understand that for more information on this topic and on other topics that are related to writing I advise you to go to pastoralfred.com and also subscribe. There you will be able to get alerts when I have new broadcasts available and also when new books that I've published are available. I also admonish you to pick up existing copies of my already published books. Also on my sites, check out the clothing store. Go to pastoralfred.com slash clothing. There are a lot of different clothing products that are available there they are going to really appeal to you and no matter where you are in the world you can order them and get them and you will enjoy them also kindly check out alfredandfriends.com slash marketplace there you will be able to buy and sell anything you want to anybody no matter where they are in the world the sign up process is not tedious it's very easy you know it will just take a few seconds and then you can sell anything you want even secondhand products products in your home rather than having a garage sale you know you can sell whatever you want through alfred and friends slash marketplace so that's it for today thank you and god bless you